Welcome to this video on substance misuse. This is the third video in the series and the aim of this session is to educate healthcare practitioners on alcohol use screening tools. My name is Dr. Krisha Patel and I'm the mental health lead for the company. So there is a spectrum of alcohol use from sensible use at one end when somebody is in the lower risk category and drinking within the limits recommended by the NHS, which is 14 units per week for men and women. And at the other end of the spectrum is dependence, which is the layman's addiction. And between these stages, there can be at risk use, which is when somebody drinks higher than the recommended 14 units per week and is at increased risk. And the next stage up would be harmful use, which would be in the higher risk category. And harmful use and dependence are both substance use disorders. So sensible drinking or lower risk drinking is, as I've already mentioned, drinking within the NHS recommended limits of 14 units a week. The NHS also recommends that there should be at least two drink free days, so two or more drink free days. The next stage up would be at risk use or increasing use. At risk drinking depends not only on absolute amounts consumed, but also on the situations and associated behaviours. So as an example, alcohol use that's associated with driving puts the person at increased risk of harming their physical health through accidents. The next step up would be harmful use, which is the higher risk category. And this is when there is continued substance use or continued alcohol consumption, despite evidence of damage to the person's mental or physical health or to their social, occupational and familial well-being. So an example of this would be continuing to drink alcohol despite evidence on recent blood tests of deranged liver function tests or deranged pancreatic function tests. And that's because there's evidence of damage to the person's physical health there. Or it could be missing work or poor perform performance at work related to drinking and related to tiredness and blackouts and poor sleep. And that's something that is affecting their occupational well-being. And the next stage up would be dependence, which is the layman's addiction. And typically people will describe having physical withdrawal symptoms, or of course, they don't always have to have withdrawal symptoms to diagnose dependence, but often there'll be physical withdrawal symptoms such as tremors, shakes, nausea, headache. And the client will use the substance, so they'll drink alcohol to avoid the development of further withdrawal symptoms. Tolerance may build up. The client may describe a loss of control. Drug or alcohol seeking can become the most important thing in their life and is prioritised over things like work and relationships. And one thing that may be seen is that the client can move from a range of drinks to having a single drink in preference to all others and the setting may become stereotyped. Screening tools. So a formal screening tool should routinely be used to assess the nature of the alcohol use disorder. Audit and Audit C are two screening tools recommended by NHS. Though other screening tools exist, these are the most commonly used tools. So AUDIT stands for Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Test, and it's a 10 question screening tool. AUDIT C is an abbreviated version of the AUDIT 10 question screening tool, and it starts off with three questions. And if a certain score is reached, indicating possible problem drinking, then it advises to go on and complete the seven other questions to complete the whole audit screening tool. Both of these tools can be found very easily online. I'll add a link to the description box below. So I'll go through one of the audit C tools I've found online. So, so how often do you have a drink containing alcohol? 
have scored two there. How many units of alcohol do you drink on a typical day when you are drinking? I'll score one there. And how often have you had six or more units if female or eight or more if male on a single occasion in the last year? less than monthly. So my score here is four. I then move on to the next bit, which says, so a total of five or more is a positive screen. So my score was four, indicating low risk, thankfully. But the next stage up would be increasing risk. The next one up would be higher risk. And then a, a score of between 11 to 12 could indicate possible dependence. So the advice is, if I score five or more and time permits, I should be completing the rest of the audit screening questions. So I wouldn't have to go on to these questions, but for the sake of this training webinar, I'll go on and carry on as if I'm going to do the whole screening tool. So these are the rest of the seven questions to complete the whole audit screening tool. And I'll answer them honestly as well. So how often during the last year have you found that you were not able to stop drinking once you had started? How often during the last year have you failed to do what was normally expected from you because of your drinking, such as failing to go to work? How often during the last year have you needed an alcoholic drink in the morning to get yourself going after a heavy drinking session? How often during the last year have you had a feeling of guilt or remorse after drinking? How often during the last year have you been unable to remember what happened the night before because you had been drinking? So that's a question about blackouts. Have you or somebody else been injured as a result of your drinking? And has a relative or friend, doctor or other healthcare worker been concerned about your drinking or suggested that you cut down? So if I answer these questions honestly, my score would be zero. So the next stage is to add the two scores together to identify necessary action. So my score from the audit C was four and from the rest of the audit questions was zero. So my total score is four. And that puts me, as I already knew, in the lower risk category and no intervention is required. However, if I'd scored higher, such as 14 or 19, a good follow-up question is, based on your answers, your drinking places you in the increasing risk or the higher risk category. How do you feel about that? So that's to get the patient's view on whether they feel they have a problem with drinking or whether they feel they're in control of it or not aware of this problem. And the advice for people in the increasing risk category is to give brief advice. And the higher risk category is, again, brief advice. So if the score is over 20, suggesting possible dependence, then the guidance is to refer to an appropriate substance misuse service. In the next session, we're going to talk about how to give information and brief advice to a client who is in the increasing or higher risk category. And we're also going to talk about the support a substance misuse service can offer for those with possible dependence.